Proverbs 31 Morning Show. My name is Maddie Vincent, and I'm here with my friend and co-host, Nicole Moses. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's so good to be back here at the morning show with you and with you. Maddie, we have been doing the morning show for over a year now. Can you believe that? I really can't, you guys. The morning show came about from my childhood dream of wanting to be a morning show talk show host. And so thank yeah. you for being here and letting me live out my childhood dream. <laughs> As a kid, kind of. Um, Nicole, we've had so many fun guests. We have. We've had so many really fun guests. We've had people from all across the ministry. Mm -hmm. We've had people from our operations department to our ministry department True. to um us being on the show yeah it has been so fun and today is even more fun because we have two guests coming in who have been on the show before Yay. kendra and melissa <gasps> hello <laughs> melissa welcome to the morning show it's always so fun to have some familiar faces around here okay you guys are here to make mm -hmm. a really fun announcement yes yeah. i want to know what it is Yes, we are. We got big news today, mm -hmm. and we wanted to announce it to you guys first on the morning, on the show. morning show. It's this our is next. Hmm? This is the first place that you're yeah. doing. First place. Stop. Yep. First yep. stop. First stop right here uh, for a big day. We, we <laughs> wanted to be with you guys first and all our P31 friends, but we are announcing a, our next online yeah. Bible study that we are so pumped about. It is Fighting Words by Ellie Holcomb. And you guys, we are going to learn to fight. <laughs> Isn't that so fun? <laughs> yes, so excited. So get your boxing gloves on, sign up. I mean, we're just, we're, we got a lot of excitement around this study by Ellie Holcomb um, and super, super excited. You guys, how did you pick this book to be the summer study for online Bible studies? Melissa, how did it come to be? Okay, my friend Mary Beth, shout out to Mary Beth. Shout out gave me this book for Christmas, Fighting Words. And you guys, I, from the moment I opened it up, I didn't read it because I thought we would ever do a 100 day devotional in OBS. Like right. we've never done anything like that before. But once I started reading it and I started memorizing scripture with the help of Ellie through this book, and y'all, it just changed everything for me. I mean, I had some rough times ahead. I got really sick in January and my, yeah. my best friend had some surgery going on, but I had those fighting words. And because I had worked on memorizing scripture, mm -hmm. if I was lying awake at night, or if I was just kind of down and the enemy was getting the best of me, those fighting words would come to my mind. Bam. Bam. <laughs> and seriously just started changing everything. And so I brought the idea to the team yeah. and Kendra was like, let's do it. You know, days. some are so busy and it's hard to do like a study where you have to spend a lot of time on. And this is super simple, a few minutes every day Yeah, and big benefits. Yeah, we're really excited mm -hmm. about it. May 31st is when it starts. And if you want to sign up and join us, go to Proverbs31.org slash study and you can learn all about it. Yes. <laughs> It's so fun. You guys, we're going to put a link in the comments for you to sign up. But Kendra and Melissa, where are you going next? Where's the next stop on your media tour today? That's right. So right now, first stop, our next stop is going to be on the P31 OBS Instagram account. And we're going to go live at 1130 with Lisa Turkhurst. And mm -hmm. we're going to talk about fighting words. She has a sweet friendship with Ellie Holcomb. So we're excited to talk to her. And then 2 p.m., guess what? Yeah. We're going to be on the P31 OBS Instagram account with the author Ellie, Ellie Holcomb, Holcomb herself. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is so fun. You guys, if you have never watched anything with Ellie Holcomb, you need to tune in. Yes. She's the most adorable she human is. I've ever seen in my whole life. She really. is. She like will sing scripture on her Instagram every Monday. Yeah. Oh my gosh. She is adorable. She's precious. And if you've never listened to her music, you guys go, go get it check it out because it's really, really good. And she uses those fighting words in her songs too. She does. We can't wait. You guys sign up for the next online Bible study. We'll put the link in the comments. We can't wait. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having Thank us, you. you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye guys. Bye. Oh, I've loved having them both on the morning show. They're so, so fun. The They're boxing fun. gloves. Oh, oh my gosh. Come on. They're so fun. Also, I have the book, Fighting Words. I do too. I've been using it for like the last week or so. 
It's really awesome. Yeah. It's really short in the morning. You have like a verse that you can read and then it's like a it, like a devotional, but it feels like a note from Ellie mm-hmm. that you kind of read and then there's a prayer. It's the perfect way to start your oh, day. I love that. I can't wait to start on May 31st. May 31st. <laughs> yeah. Well, Maddie, I have a fun question. Okay. I really want to know, but before you answer, I'm going to pitch you the question, but okay. keep your answer. Um, of all the morning shows that we've done, do you have a favorite? While you're thinking, okay. I also want to know if you have been following along on the morning show, will you let us know in the comments how many shows you think you have joined us for? I just think that would be so fun. I have your comments right over here. So I am checking it out. That's amazing. Do you okay. Have answer? Is this a really hard choice? Because we've had so many cool people yeah, on the show. We have. But one episode in particular sticks out to me. It's one we did with Wendy Blight. And she shared a lot about her journey with anxiety and panic attacks. And she gave such great biblical wisdom mm-hmm. and practical steps and tools um, that you can use when you're experiencing those feelings. And it was such a good show so many good comments and feedback if you didn't watch it you can actually go back we have all the shows saved on facebook and on youtube and you can go back and watch it just look for the show by wendy blight yes what about you nicole i think we've had lisa allen as a guest on our show a couple times and we love lisa allen she is just the absolute best and she did a show about how to know what your calling is how to go after your calling how does that change with your role? Um, maybe if you're a mom mm-hmm. or maybe you're caring for your aging parents and how that changes with your role and your season of life. And it just impacted me so much. It was so informative. It was so thought provoking for me. And I feel like it's just really stuck with me this mm-hmm. that, since then. So it was so good. We sound and when we like, we, we love them. The most. Most. <laughs> okay. So today, We are going to shift gears a little bit, and we're going to talk about five places to park your mind when God says no. Everything we're talking about today is actually based on a free resource um, by Lisa Turkhurst. We're going to link it in the comments for you guys to download later on, Um, but we're going to talk through this. Um, So, Nicole, I would love to know, when has there been a time in your life where you just felt like God was saying no? Oh, gosh. A few times. <laughs> it's hard a to few, just one time. A few times. Um, but one time I think that sticks out to me is probably my senior year of college. Um, mm. I think that is a really hard time in general. But I was getting literal no after no after no for jobs and internships. And it felt like God had literally just forgotten me. That mm. he... Um, had a plan for my life up until this moment and then he just left me to fend for myself and it was really hard to get all those no's and really want to start that next step in my life um, and use my education and and start this but um, there was nothing for a really long time I mean for well after I graduated I didn't I didn't get a job and that was really hard it's a really sneaky season, yeah. that season, post-graduation, like, post-college, you're kind of stepping into adulthood, and I really think that this topic is really valuable. If you yeah. just graduated for college, or maybe you have a daughter that just graduated for college, share this video with them, because I think a lot of what we're going to talk about today will be really, really yeah. helpful to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the time that you have gotten a no from God? I mean, just like you, Nicole, I can think of several off the top of my head. Um, But one time in particular where I feel like I just felt super defeated by my life circumstances, um, I just remember having this conversation with the Lord like, hey, are you listening to me? Because there's this really, really hard thing happening. And for me, it was a relationship with a family member. There was this really, really hard thing happening. And... It had been going on for several years at this point, and there just seemed to be no progress or breakthrough. And I knew, I knew that the Lord was capable of helping me through this season of my life, and it just totally felt like he was silent. Mm. And I remember just praying to the Lord, like, 
are you listening? Do you hear me? Have you forgotten me? Because what I'm walking through is very fixable <laughs> if you want to intercede. Yeah. And I feel so sad and hurt that you're not. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a really difficult, that was a really difficult time where I had all these solutions for the Lord of how he could fix what I was going through. And none of them <laughs> seemed to be the one that he was choosing to go through. They just, it just felt like no after no. Yes. Um, I don't know if anyone can relate, especially with family situations and relationships and circumstances. They can be so difficult. And yeah. I don't know if anyone here relates. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. yeah, that's really hard, but I'm so excited about what we're going to talk through today. Mm-hmm. I think it's such a good conversation for anyone in any stage of life, um, and it's something that we'll all go through at some point or definitely have gone through. Yeah, life is just so unpredictable and uncertain, and it's really great to be equipped with these places that we can park our yeah. minds when we just feel like the Lord isn't listening or he's saying no. Mm-hmm. So the first place that we want to park our minds when the Lord is saying no is just to remember that it might be a not yet. It might be a not now, it might be a not necessarily, and it might not be in our best interest. Mm-hmm. Um, I think about the story in Luke 8, when Jesus heals Jars' daughter, um, I think of just the conversation they had with Jesus when they come and they're like, you're too late. You're too late, Jesus. She died. It's too late. You're too late. You should have come two days ago. Mm-hmm. And Jesus, in the most nonchalant way possible, says, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. And that is such a strange response to me. Mm -hmm. Like, these people are grieving. Yeah. And they had all these solutions of how Jesus could prevent this from happening. And he showed up to what they thought was too late. And then Jesus heals her. Mm -hmm. And she stands up and she's alive. And it makes me think that God's timing might not be what we think, but God's timing is always perfect um and we might think it's too late we might think that it's over that hope is not possible anymore that we just have to move on and grieve and God is saying I have a plan that's going to bring the most glory to my name and you just need to trust me and so I think of that story often when I feel frustrated that the Lord isn't doing what I want him to do when I want him to do it that his timing is perfect yeah. and his timing is always going to be mm. the best possible solution. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's so good, Maddie. The second thing that we can do is continue to cry out to God. He can handle our gut, honest feelings mm-hmm. and reactions. I think that is so important just to go to God with exactly what we're feeling. Um, we don't have to polish ourselves up. We don't have to get to a place of acceptance before we come to God in prayer when we're walking through something hard. We can go to him with exactly with what we're feeling. And I want to read um, an example, Psalm 41. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. I just love the Psalms because I feel like the ones that they're written by David, they're just so refreshingly honest. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that that's so important for us to just remember that we can go to God with exactly how we're feeling when we're walking through something hard. He knows and he wants to be that place for us to come. And so we are completely safe with him and to go to him with exactly with what we're feeling. Yeah, that's so good. I think the Psalms are such a great place to turn to when you feel frustrated because there's so many Mm -hmm. Psalms of lament and they kind of give us permission to be honest with how we feel. There's nothing wrong with how we feel and we don't have to hide it from the Lord. He already knows. Mm-hmm. So I don't, we share it with him. Yeah. Okay. So the third place that we need to park our mind when God says no, is that we will need to remember that when we try to control things out of our control, we start acting out of control. Uh, <laughs> it kind of steps on your toes a you little bit. The truth, uh, um, and so we need to just remember that a better place to park our mind instead of controlling something is to look at what the Lord has already provided. Yeah. Look at where he's already given us provisions, protection, and where he will give us perseverance yeah. to continue on. Yeah. Um, we always 
have a choice on where we let our mind focus. Mm -hmm. And we can either focus on what we're lacking or we can focus on what the Lord has provided. So yeah. remember that. We can't control everything, but we can control where we focus. Mm -hmm. So let's focus on mm -hmm. what God has provided, what God has helped us persevere in, and what God has protected us mm -hmm. from. That's good. Our fourth tip is that we can cling to God's word to help build trust in his plan. I want to read Isaiah 55, 11. It says, so as my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. When we read God's word, we see so many, we see so many examples of people who maybe like us didn't have clear answers from God. It didn't have clear path. Um, but God always came through for them and led them to exactly the place that they needed to be. Um, and so when we turn to God's word, we can cling to his promises mm -hmm. and remember his past faithfulness. And that will help us as we move forward in what might seem like a very uncertain and scary season. Yeah, that's so good, Nicole. Okay, so the last place that we need to park our mind, and this is certainly not least. This is a hard <laughs> no. one. Um, when God says no to us, it's so easy to feel tempted um, that God doesn't love us, which couldn't be further from the mm -hmm. truth. Nicole and I were talking before um, we went live just about this last final place to park our minds when God says no, and we were talking about her dog. <laughs> so Nicole and I don't have kids. We don't. Which I think this could probably be applicable when you have kids. <laughs> yeah. But for that. us, we have animals. Yes. So, Nicole has a great Pyrenees. A great Pyrenees, yeah. She is big and she's fluffy yes, and, and her she name is my girl. baby. She's <laughs> and I love her. And you so love much. her so much, but that doesn't mean you say yes to every desire yeah, that Anna has. Absolutely. I have to say no for her own protection and health sometimes. It's in her best interest. And I think it's the same when I think of. Um, my siblings as they say no to their kids mm. you could not say yes to every whim a toddler has yeah. that would be that would be crazy <laughs> <laughs> that would be chaos yes um my mom and dad couldn't say yes to everything that i wanted when i was in high school because that would have been insane that would not have been what was in my best interest yeah. and so when we are tempted to believe that when god says no that means he doesn't love us we need to remember this that sometimes the most lovingly loving thing that we can do is say no to the people that we love yeah. and no doesn't mean is no doesn't equate with not love yeah right yeah and so we have to remember we have to go back to scripture and we have to remember that God's love for us is unconditional and even when he says no even when it doesn't it hurts even when he doesn't seem to be doing things the way that we want them to be done He's saying no because it is in our best interest yeah. to say no. And we have to hold on to the truth that we know that God's love for us is unconditional. Mm, that's so good. Mm. All of these have been so good. They're such important reminders. And we do not want you to forget them. So if you would like to download um, this resource with these reminders, we will drop the link for that in the comments for you. Yeah. Nicole, I would love to pray oh, for us. Do. I'd love to pray for yes. you. I'm thinking specifically for the girl that just graduated college who feels very confused mm -hmm. and uncertain of what's yeah. next. And so I'd love to pray for her too. Yeah, so let us pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your unconditional love, God. Thank you for the ways that you provide for us. Thank you for the ways that you protect us. And thank you for the ways that you equipped us to persevere through what we're going through. God, we're so thankful that when we pray, you bend down your ear to listen, that there is this active God who loves us and cares for us, um, that we have access to. Um, thank you for that, God. Lord, I pray for the girl who just graduated that maybe feels uncertain for what's ahead. God, I pray that you just give her the assurance that um, maybe a no is just not yet. Maybe it means that this isn't her best interest and that it, you're protecting her through this, God. Lord, I pray for um, everybody who's walking through a tough situation, whether it's with a family member or a friend where they're just asking you, God, please come and intercede. Please fix this circumstance that um, you just remind them that you are holding them close right now in this moment and that 
you will say yes at the very perfect time, that you have a very, very perfect time. Um, we love you, Father. We're so thankful for who you are. We're thankful for what you've done for us. Um, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we hope this encouraged you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to come back to our next show on May 26th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We are going to be discussing three steps to following God's purpose for your life with our special guest, Amanda Bacon. And I can't wait. We will see you then. See ya. Bye. Bye.